Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? And welcome back to the podcast. I got a good, juicy topic for you all today. And guess what? It looks like Kanye West has put his foot so deep in his mouth. Woo! You know what? Without no further ado, let's get it popping. What up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Look, if you haven't liked or subscribed, you have to do so because what this does is pushes us through the algorithm and gets us to a point to where you can see us regardless. You know what I mean? But look, I got a really good one for you guys today. This here is going to be like a, maybe a good four course meal. We're going to have a steak. We're going to have some mashed potatoes. We're going to have some corn salad. And we're going to have that Caesar salad. And we're going to start with that one, that Caesar salad. Because you know what it's how it is? You got to ease yourself into it. You know what I'm saying? Well, here it is. TikTok star Katie Sigmund, net worth over $1 million. Can you believe that? On TikTok. But hey, this is where we are today, right? Yes, sir. 7 million followers. Katie Sigmund is facing charges. Do you guys want to know why she's facing charges? This all-American white girl. <laughs> this all-American. Yep, you see that golf club in her hand? That's exactly what she, she had a golf club. And she swung a golf ball over the Grand Canyon along with the club, losing it. And now she's facing charges. I mean, she's typical. Like I said, I'm going to have to take it back to what I said before. It's your typical white girl America. You know? I mean, think about it. You go to the movies. You're watching a horror flick. Michael, Jason, everybody's running. One Asian, one black dude, Puerto Rican, African, Somalian, whole group. Everybody's running away from the monster in the woods. Who turns around and tries to make friends with the monster? Yes, you're all American white girl. I guess she thought she could get by with it, but hey, it is what it is, right? But yeah, she's facing charges, guys. Um, This is going to be interesting. I want to see how it plays out. That's going to be hilarious. So with that being said, good luck, Katie Sigmund. Let's keep it moving, guys. On to the next course. This here is a loss to the music industry. A legend of the famous group we all know as Fleetwood Mac. Christine McVie has passed. And from what I know, it was an illness they didn't specify the type of illness that it was she passed yesterday my condolences go out to her this is a tragic loss she was um 79 years old she was about to hit 80 can you believe that 80 years old wow her first band she played in was chicken shack it was a popular british band back in the early 1960s and then after that she went on to be with Fleetwood Mac as we know as we know her today and you know great songwriter I mean songs like Don't Stop and then Dreams which is my personal favorite but hey let's pan it over to see what they had to actually have to say about it some very sad news from the music world members of Fleetwood Mac and other artists are mourning the loss of Christine McVie the group's longtime keyboard player died yesterday after a short illness that's according to her family. She was 79 years old. And a tribute Fleetwood Mac's lead singer, that's Stevie Nicks, called her my best friend in the whole world. I love that. Anthony Mason spoke to McVie back in 2017 about her life in one of the most popular rock bands of the 1970s. Do you remember the first time you sang together? I was playing Say You Love Me. <clears throat> and you and Stevie chirped in with these fantastic background vocals. I mean, I sat there with goosebumps. I could not believe it. As singer, songwriter, and keyboardist, McVie helped make that magic. But she was working as a window dresser when she got her break in music. Somebody walked past the window while I was dressing a dummy. And uh, it was a friend of mine said, do you want to join the band? So I thought, well, anything beats this. The band, called Chicken Shack, had a modest hit in Britain in 1969. We were living in a man's world, for sure, yeah. back then. But I just loved it. Yeah. I loved the blues, and that was the thing that drove us on. Uh, Fleetwood Mac were my idol when I was in Chicken Shack. 
The next year, after marrying Fleetwood Mac bassist John McVie, she joined the band. But in 1998, tired of the travel and the feuding, McVie quit and moved to the English countryside, where she'd stay for 16 years. Guys, we're saying goodbye to a legend. Fleetwood Mac, you're in our hearts. Hopefully you guys can put out another record. I would love that. <laughs> but Christine McVie will be missed. Kanye West, one of the biggest artists on the planet today, responsible for hits like Gold Digger and Power, and protege of Jay-Z, come on, man, has just been hit with $2 million a year in child support. Good God Almighty. Man, there are so many people that are on two sides of this whole situation when it comes to Kanye, period. Some love him, some hate him. I think it's like, man, it's got to be 50-50. It's interesting what this guy has done to the world, how he has influenced the world and have so many people talking. But you know what? Let's get into this situation and figure out what's going on. Let's check it out. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West have officially settled their divorce. Yep. This settlement comes nearly two years after the reality star filed for divorce from the rapper, ending their six-year marriage. What are all of the possibilities that can happen? What's my life going to look like? I really want to be active for my kids. ET's learned Kim and Kanye will share joint custody of their four kids with, quote, equal access. But Kim will still have the children the majority of the time. They share nine-year-old North, six-year-old Saint, four-year-old Chicago, and three-year-old Song. I do have you know, a family that I have to just be positive and get it together for. The settlement confirmed Kanye will fork over $200,000 per month in child support. He's also responsible for an equal share of the kids' school and security expenses. I think it's very bizarre how how they make him look in the media. And to be honest with you, you know, crazy knows crazy. If he is crazy, then I guess he's just attracting what he's who he is, right? Which would be Kim. But they make her out to look like she's so innocent in the media. Man, whew. let's get back to it. We definitely have our, our rules um, is the best that you can do. According to their prenup agreement, both Kim and Kanye waived any spousal support and division of assets. But any dispute regarding their kids will be resolved through mediation. It's not an easy transition. During the contentious divorce and custody battle, Kanye made many claims, including accusing Kim of not allowing him to see his kids. In one instance, he alleges he didn't get an invite to his daughter's Chicago's fourth birthday party. We have different views sometimes. We have different things. At the time, the source told ET that Kim was, quote, overwhelmed and upset by Kanye's outburst, adding Kim's main priority has always been their children. Her goal has always been to have a healthy co-parenting relationship with Kanye, where both of them are involved. As you see, <laughs> nowhere in this little piece did they say anything negative about her. If anything, they tried to make her look like she's the victim. And I guarantee you, she's done just as much crazy as him. Let's get back to it. It was really tough for me. Nearly a year later, seems the two are on the same page and leaving things on good terms. Guys, that's bizarre. What do you say about that? I know I'll, I'll say this. <laughs> you can't put me on $200,000 a month in child support. I would walk to the jail and just lock myself up. This is ridiculous. But hey, we'll see how this rolls out and we'll keep it moving. All right. On to the next. Last but certainly not least, we have finally came to the meat of this whole episode. Yeah, guys, there's been talk that Kanye says that he's he's had good things to say about Hitler. I can't believe this. Well, hey, Kanye in tip-top form, fashion as he is. He was on an InfoWars show with Alex Jones. And if you guys don't know who Alex Jones is, he is a very interesting character, to say the least. But let's get to it, guys. I'm just look, I'm just I'm just gonna let it speak for itself. Here we go, let's get it popping. 
I watch it Saturday Night Live where he grovels. And, but at the end, he says, well, whoever that group is, we're not allowed to talk about it. Good night. So he admitted, though, there's powerful groups controlling our speech, at least the end. Everybody has to do it in their own way. But he said they dropped that nigga. And as my friend, I've never dropped a rap bar ever saying anything on a Jewish platform dissing my friend Dave Chappelle. And I have an issue with it. And you could tell big country I got an issue. That's the security. You could tell all, you could tell Corey Smith, he don't deserve to wear gold teeth. To you. What do you have to say about Corey Smith's gold teeth? <laughs> Real quick, 10 years ago, he was like, there's a mafia. They came to me and said what I got to do. He ran off to Africa. Now he's kind of come back. Did he sell out? He didn't sell out. He, yeah, he sold out a little bit because, um, because he, he denounced the king. You know what I'm saying? He, he denounced me. I'm the one fighting on the front line. And no black person should say nothing bad about me in public unless they are puppet. Period. I put my life on the line. And then afterwards, they're going to talk about it. If anything happens to me, everyone's going to be, oh, he was the greatest. He was the greatest. Everybody shut up. Everybody shut up. Go home to your scared little bins. Wow. Your scared little town home and your scared little movie contracts. And shut up. Don't talk to me about nothing, bro. Well, what do you think of Ice Cube? That he, he lost nine or seven million, whatever it was, because he wouldn't take the shot. I respect that. Yeah, I respect Cube, but he's got to play his position. It's like, you know, it's fine. I wanted Cube to come in and help us with the politics because he's one of the only people that was brave enough to talk. He's definitely for real. Yeah, he, yeah, he's he's an engineer. He's an architect and engineer by trade. And then he dropped out to do entertainment. Guys, hey, everybody, stop. All engineers, we need our engineers back. We need our architects back. We need our doctors back. Stop with the photos on Instagram. Stop with all the entertainment. 21 Savage owns a bank. We have brilliant people that are inside of- By the way, I want to process. say the future, yeah. we're very yeah. close with some folks who are actually having a bank. It's funny you bring that up, a bank and internet processing for patriots. That's the future, is not trying to fix Twitter or fix any of it, building our own system. I mean, the future is the past also, because as soon as you got the, the internet, all these things, the data can be copied by China, by these banks. Yeah, you don't really own your data, but it's on the cloud. So well, this is the last question. Yeah. I, I know Louis Farrakhan. I've interviewed him. I agree with like 95% of what he says. Some things I don't agree with. But the point is, I think he's, he cares about people. He's a real guy, and he's nothing compared to the left saying all whites are devils and criminals. So they're way more racist than he is. But I get you know, what he's been saying. You kind of got mad at him and said, hey, don't disrespect me with my billions they just stole. Because he said, hey, maybe it was never yours. I think his point is what you just made. If they can grab it out of your account, it's never yours. Unless it's your farm, your people, your kids, your thing, it's not yours. I don't think he was dissing your success. I think he was saying, was it ever yours to begin with? They can take it. Our life is not ours. It's God's. So now you get what he was saying. I talked to I talked to the minister. So oh, good. So he's, you're not mad at him now. I'm not mad at anyone. I'm not mad at Ari. Well, uh, if it's not if it's not off record, tell us about the conversation. On the record, Ari Emanuel, if you need me and your wife to step into a private room and have me work on her clothing line, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, so you were a little mad at Farrakhan. You had to talk. How did how'd that go? It's gonna be all Christian, Ari. Rom, Rom, Rom. Don't 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 worry. It's gonna be all Christian, Rom. You are something else. Look, you look really friendly and nice, but with that mask, you look evil as hell. Let me just say this in closing. I've done a lot of study. I think Hitler was a really bad guy, and I repudiate what Hitler did. I understand that the British intelligence set him up and used I, him. I, I like Hitler. I, I don't like Hitler. Oh, there we go. You're trying to be shocking with that. I'm not trying to be shocking. I like Hitler. I do not. I The, the Holocaust is not what happened. Let's look at the facts of that. And Hitler has a lot of redeeming qualities. So tell us, you love, think, we you think Hitler was the good guy in World War II? I think God says man should not kill. We should not have wars, period. None of us should be killing anybody. The Ukraine and mm. the streets of Chicago, all violence should stop, and we should all serve Christ. That's what I feel. And I feel like I love everyone accordingly, from all the way from the Balenciagas to the Hitlers. To well, let me tell you a story. Hold, hold on, sir. Okay. To Ari Emanuel, to Jamie Dimon, to the people who... What's that? Got a Amber alert. Here's what I'm saying. Wow. My grandfather would never tell World War II stories. And after he died, we read over his stuff. And he never even told my dad all the stuff he did and everything. But it was all in their letters and commendations. He told me, he, he said, kid, I was like eight years I old. I Amber alerts is when my ex-girlfriend Amber was doing something in the streets. I got it. Before he died, I was like five years old. The point was, and I was like, tell me a World War II story. Tell me a World War II story. 
And he said, okay, well, we came in out of Africa. We came into Italy. He was there three years. He said, by the time they got to Germany, they went into this death camp and there were piles of dead bodies, a hundred feet tall with blackbirds eating people's eyeballs out. All I'm telling you is, is that just because you hate the globalists, what they're doing, I get it. Klaus Schwab's I grandfather I don't hate was anybody. a Nazi. I think there's Nazis above the ADL. Wow. I get it. But you just don't go around today saying that you love Hitler, not in today's society. It's not good. And I think, yeah, it's just Kanye is just his finding himself. I get it. But this right here, no, sir. Absolutely not. Yeah, but Nazis are like kind of cool. Because you like your uniforms. No, I just, these are people. Everyone's a people. I love all people. So you love the Zionists? I love this. I said that earlier in the show. All right. Do <laughs> you have any comments on Hitler? Um, uh, I, I have to did, agree who with Who did Ye. Ye say he hated? Ye didn't say he hated anybody. Why isn't anybody listening to him? He said, I love this person. I love the people who are trying to take away my children. I love this person. He never yeah, said But I don't think anybody. we, listen, I'm just getting it totally clear. But I think Alex, Stalin. You the same thing. You did the same thing. on Stalin is horrible. Hitler is horrible. Mao is horrible. No, no. I love all of those. You love Mao Zedong? Absolutely. Mao brought... Well, clear, clarify that. You're saying you're like Christ-like. You love everybody. Yeah. No matter. You love Jim Jones. Like you, love, you love Jeffrey Dahmer. Absolutely. Everybody. Okay, well, let's, let's clarify. I, I get to... But he didn't need clarification because he said, I'm starting with the Bible. He's ending with the Bible. And, and that's what... But they did it to you, Alex, because you had a guy who came here. And you're like, I'll be Satan. I'll be the evil guy. I did Sandy Hook. Remember, you did the same thing that he's doing right now. All right. Absolutely. Yay, we appreciate you. Anything else you want to add? Jesus is king. Start. There it is, guys. Woo. Man. Kanye is an interesting character, man. I have to admit, he's interesting. He's a very polarizing individual. But there's, hey, like I said, there are two sides to this whole situation when it comes to Kanye West. There's 50% of people who like him. There's 50% who don't. Hey, it is what it is, man. But hey, thanks for checking out the show. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Definitely leave a comment. Like this video so we can be pushed up through the algorithm. We got more stuff like this coming. All right. See you guys soon. Peace out.